Welcome to this video installment. I am Ryan, I'm a second day triathlon. Today we're going to be talking about training and specifically how to avoid being overtrained. Uh, we don't want a situation where we're rolling into a race and we are over fatigued and just not really ready for that race. Um, you're tired and worn out and you're going to potentially set yourself up for being injured, uh, and especially in training too. So we're going to, going to go over the, the highlights of what to look for, how to avoid it, and what you can do to kind of make sure and put it in your plan that it doesn't happen to you. So it could be at any point in training. You could be at the very beginning phase of your training. You could be in the middle of it. You could be in the taper period. You could be at any point in your training and start experiencing the condition of being overtrained. So the signs is chronic fatigue. So you're just constantly tired and worn out all the time. You know, some days you're going to be tired, but there's going to see, be, you know, if it's just day after day, week after week, and you're just noticing over time and never having any energy, uh, it could be mono or it could be chronic fatigue. So just make sure, also go to your doctor, get checked out. But if, you, if you're doing your training, everything else is fine, but you're just really, really tired all the time, uh, that could be a sign you're going kind of down the path of being overtrained. So if you're irritable all the time and you weren't before and you're still drinking your coffee and you're still irritable with your coffee, um, that could be a sign you're starting to be overtrained. Trouble sleeping, which is kind of counterintuitive. You should be so exhausted. You should be able to go to sleep without a problem. But sometimes you just lay there and you're just so overworked and your body's so overworked you can't even go to sleep. And so you have trouble staying asleep all night. Um, sometimes you know, overtraining might, might not just be the physical aspect. Um, if you've got extra life stress going on around, you've got a job going on, you've got things with the kids, uh, the family's activities, uh, just family issues altogether, other life stresses can add in and kind of compound with training to create overtraining conditions. So it might even be your physical training. Um, another one is if you're constantly sore. If you're walking around and your, your calves, your legs, your shoulders, they're just, they, they're always sore. During workouts, after workouts, a day after workouts, you take some days off, they're still sore. Could be kind of signs you're getting chronic fatigue. Uh, mentally diminished. So if you find yourself, you're, you know, a lot of us when we wake up in the morning, it takes a little bit of time to wake up and you're kind of fuzzy in your thought process and you're not really, really coherent is what I call it. But if you find this is like the situation like all day long, you're just constantly fuzzy, no matter if you sleep and everything else. It might be kind of a sign it's like your body is creating too much cortisol and it's just overloading you and your brain just saying i'm done i'm going to shut down whether you like it or not could be a sign of overtraining bad decision making kind of goes with that so you know if you find a, a hard time doing the right thing at work or you know making bad decisions at home or being late all the time or choosing to you know it's easier to just surf on the internet than actually do the things productive things you need to do to get done during the day um, so if you're making bad decisions, that could be a sign that you've got, you know, your, your body is telling you, it's like, hey, it's time to power it down and get revitalized. So those are just some of the signs. So be in tune with your body and know if these signs start popping up. I always go with the adage, it's better to be 10% under trained than 1% over. So <clears throat> if you have to miss a few workouts a week because of work or something like that, it's better to miss them than to skip out on sleep and make up for workouts, especially if they're high intensity. So it's okay to miss a few workouts. Now, if you're missing 50% of them, then we have another conversation. But it's better to be 10% undertrained than overtrained, especially when you go on a race day. If you are overtrained at all, it will show up. You won't be excited about the race. You'll be tired. You'll be fatigued. You'll just be happy to get it over with. It's just not a pleasant experience. So always pay attention. Uh, being overtrained opens you up for an injury. So if you're constantly sore, your muscles are not recuperating, they're not rebuilding, they're not revitalizing. You need to pay attention to this because if you go out and you're just constantly doing workouts after workouts after workouts, then the compound, you're going to start getting stresses and strains in your muscles. You could be st starting to look at uh, stress fractures or, or pre-stress fractures, pre-stress breaks or something like that, stress points in your bones um, and joint issues and that type of thing. So just don't, don't try to power through it. If week after week, day after day, you're sore and stuff, you could be opening yourself up to injury. So you definitely want to listen to your body. You can get around it by having a smart training schedule and a smart racing schedule. Don't put Ironmans week, weekend after weekend. Um, you know, I've done an Ironman and then four weeks later done a second Ironman. I did it right because in four weeks you got a week to fully recover, a week to still kind of recover, start getting back into it, and then a week to kind of get volume back up, and then a week to taper into the race. So you built in plenty of recovery opportunity. 
But if you're doing a, an Ironman the weekend and something the weekend after, that is a bad plan. You're setting yourself up for being overtrained because you've done too much in the race the weekend before. So make sure in your racing schedule you're doing smart too. In your training schedule, um, if you're doing it yourself, if you don't have a coach involved, you know, the rule of thumb is don't go 10% over what you've done the weekend before. Now there's been some situations where I've had athletes go a little bit higher because we have a truncated timetable and we kind of need to get up to the distance a little bit quicker. Uh, but as long as they're not experiencing any of the conditions of being overtrained, that's not a problem, but you need to listen to it. And if you've got an aggressive training schedule, you might have to dial it back. So just be smart about your training schedule. Give yourself a lot of time. If you have a short amount of time, you got to be really smart and being proactive about recovery methods. So we're talking, you know, foam rolling, we're talking stretching, dynamic warm-ups, we're talking nutrition, we're talking sleeping. Making sure you're doing all that stuff in the background if you're going to be excessively um, uh, uh, aggressive with a training schedule or you're going to do a bunch of, you know, I know right now at the time of recording this video, uh, we're in the global pandemic and races are getting postponed and they're getting moved to the fall. So now a lot of people are looking at they had their spring races and their fall races, and now they have fall and fall races. So if they're not deferring, they could be doing two 70.3s three weeks apart. They could be doing a 70.3 and a month later doing a full Ironman. So make sure that you're being proactive if you're going to attempt that. Make sure you're either getting advice from a coach like myself uh, about a smart training schedule and make sure you're paying attention to being overtrained because Sometimes two coaches can kind of see this stuff before the athletes can. If you're commenting on your workouts, you're like, oh, I'm just not feeling it. Or if heart rates are super high on an easy workout, coaches should be able to be watched for this stuff too in the metrics. But be proactive. Be proactive in your race planning. Be proactive in your, your training schedule. Like I said, eating, sleeping, um, stress levels. So if you're, if you're going to push the envelope for other stuff, you need to make sure you're making up for it in uh, recovery arena. And if you're not, uh, you kind of need to reevaluate. You know, do you need to change your your goals, change your race settings, put something out longer in advance, do a deferral, whatever. Um, these are different ways, and this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg. But um, to avoid, make sure you're you're not going to overtrain yourself because if you run into race day and you're overtrained because you didn't you either had too short of a timetable or you're really worried about completing the distance, so you did a lot, a lot, a lot of huge amounts of work. And then you're tired and you run down and you run into the race and you just don't you're not happy about it it's kind of a it's kind of a suck way to go into a race and stuff so make sure that you're doing everything smart that you can um, so you're leading in the race day and you're not setting yourself for injury you're not setting yourself up for burnout because the last thing that as a coach or the event organizers or anybody wants to see cross the finish line and be like that's done i'm never doing one again you don't want to see that and if you avoid overtraining you're definitely going to avoid a situation where you can set yourself up for a little bit of disappointment there at the end. That's the end of this little discussion about being overtrained and avoiding that in your training. So if you've got any questions, put them in the comments, email me back. I'll be happy to get back to you about any of those, and we'll see you in the next video.